Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and to the 2023 Hannah Witten sex survey. Yes, I know we're almost halfway through the year, ugh, but better late than never. I had a baby and so I completely forgot about this in January, but here we are. We are still doing the Hannah Witten sexy survey. It continues, it's happening now. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, for the last three years, we're on to year four now, we have done a annual, official, very scientific survey in my Instagram polls, on my Instagram audience, in a variety of different sex-themed questions and surveys and multiple choice options. And this year is no different, except for it being a bit late. One of the exciting developments for this year's survey though, is that Instagram's poll feature now lets you choose four options instead of having to do like the quiz feature to get four answers. It's now all in polls. We love it. Other things to say before we get stuck in. This is just all a bit of fun. Instagram polls, even though you can have four options now, are still very, very limited. And I know that, and that's the point. <laughs> I feel like every year there are either comments on this video or in my Instagram DMs being like, if you did a Google survey or like a survey monkey thing, then you could get this and compare this to that. And I'm like, no, please, no, don't make me do that. NatSal is what that is for. And NatSal 4 is happening and we can just wait for them to release their official data and we can react to that. But my surveys, the Hannah Witten sex survey is just for shits and gigs. <laughs> It's low stakes, low stakes guys. And then the other thing that happens every year when I post the polls on my Instagram is I get flooded with DMs of people being like, oh no, I clicked the wrong one. So once again, take all of this with a pinch of salt and don't worry about clicking the wrong one, it's fine. But on to the results. First off, we're gonna take a look at my Instagram demographics. So for the Hannah Witten Sex Survey 2023, poll stories, we got about 28,000 responses. So yes, that is less than other years. Yes, my engagement on Instagram has gone down since having a baby, but that is like a conversation for another time. But 28,000, still a hell of a lot of people. So a new thing that Instagram actually does with its demographics now is that it differentiates between the demographics of your followers and the demographics of your engaged audience. So previously, we've only been able to see the demographics of my followers. And so this is what that is. This is the age range of my followers. We've got the majority, 54.7%, 25 to 34. Every year, this age group is increasing. <laughs> Last year, it was just under half, and now way over half. So, you know, we're all getting older. <laughs> and then 28.4%, 18 to 24s, and then 10.9% the 35 to 44s, which actually I'm inching closer to that category. So come on, let's go. But let's see if that's any different from my engaged audience age range. So, ooh, oh, okay, yeah. So interestingly, my engaged audience is younger. So 25 to 34 year olds, still the majority, but at 50.5%, and then the 18 to 24 year olds, at 40.9%. That is so different, that's really interesting. But also makes a lot of sense because young people have more time to be on social media because even though 10% of my followers are 35 to 44 years old, only 4.7% of my engaged audience are 35 to 44 years old. So I know you guys are busy, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, so countries of my followers, we've got United Kingdom, 38.6%, United States, 20.6%, and then Australia, Canada, and Germany. Let's see for engaged audience, if that's any different. I would say that's about the same, but like a higher percentage actually of engaged followers in the United Kingdom, and then the United States lower. I guess if I talk about like UK specific things in that, Makes sense. And then the interesting one, I've got my own questions about gender in the polls, but I thought this was interesting. Of my followers, 77.2% are women and 22.7% are men. Of my engaged audience, 88.6% are women and 11.3% are men. So it'll be interesting to see if the engaged audience stat for that is more 
close to what I asked in the poll. So those are my Instagram demographics, but now I have my own demographics questions so we could get a little bit more accurate. And also because this is a sex survey, we've got some sexual and romantic orientation questions as well. And most of these questions are identical to the ones that we did last year. So we can kind of sort of compare, but then this year's theme, cause we've been doing themes the last couple of years, this year's theme is actually what you guys wanna know about each other. It's peer to peer nosiness. That's what I'm calling this year's theme. But let's start with the demographics. So what is your gender? And the options were man, woman, non-binary and other. 87% are women, 8% men, 5% non-binary and 1% other. So that is a lot more women who are like engaged in this. And then 5% non-binary, that's pretty substantial. And then are you trans? 3% said yes, 97% said no. I had this question last year because a similar thing happened because we've got a higher percentage of people who say they're non-binary but less who say they're trans. So if you are non-binary, do not identify as trans or what? Because that's interesting to me. Are you part of the LGBTQ plus community? And I removed the T here because I was talking about sexual orientation, but actually, I should have worded this question differently. I should have just asked, are you LGBTQ plus? Because the community doesn't exist without the T. So I apologize for that wording, but this is a question about sexual orientation. 45% of you said yes, and 55% of you said no. And I think this is really similar to last year as well. Yeah, it's basically exactly the same as last year. Now, sexual orientation, 55%, heterosexual, 6% homosexual, 35% polysexual, bisexual, pansexual, and then 4% asexual. And actually the percentage for asexual has gone up since last year. Percentage for heterosexual gone down slightly and the like bi pan umbrella has gone up. Homosexual, they're pretty much the same. Cool, and then we also asked about romantic orientation because those two things are different. And 60% of people are heteroromantic, 6% homoromantic, and then 32% poly, bi, pan, and 1% aromantic. And that is pretty much bang on last year. Interesting. Everyone's sexuality is in flux, but our romantic attachments, apparently less fluid, according to this very scientific survey. Are you sexually active? However you define, 86% of you said yes. This is, I think is just an important question to situate us when it comes to then like asking lots more questions about sex. So we know roughly what percentage of the people answering that applies to. Are you in a relationship? Same reasoning for this question here. 72% of you said yes and 28% said no. Next question, are you non-monogamous? So like polyamorous or open relationship or swinger, whatever is under that umbrella, lots of things. And 7% of you said yes and 86% said no and 7% said not sure. I think at the last minute I added a not sure here because that wasn't there last year because last year 18% of you said yes you were non-monogamous or your relationship style was non-monogamous and 82% said no. So we can't really compare. It's not, not super accurate data, but that's still like a substantial amount of people aren't like automatically being like, yes, I am monogamous. Are you married? 20% of you said yes, 80% said no. I'm curious about these percentages because I didn't ask this for the last two years. So I asked this question back in 2020 and 8% of you were married then. So that was three years ago and a load more of you have now gotten married. So more like substantial chunk of my audience now married. Interesting, but I guess that's getting older for some people. <laughs> okay, this one I was super interested in. Now that I have a baby, I wondered if a lot more of my followers had kids either because existing followers were having children or because other people out there who already had kids were like finding my content as someone who also has a baby. 15% have kids and 85% don't. So what does that compare to previous years? So last year, the answer was 9% had kids and 91% didn't. So there is an increase in the proportion. And are you slash your partner currently pregnant? 4% said yes and 96% said no. I think that was similar to last year. Um, yes, bang on, exactly the same. Okay, so that's my demographics questions over and now just onto some general sex questions, some of which I've asked before because I just, I just wanted to compare year on year, you know? So this one is, have you ever used a sex toy? And 82% of you said yes. The last time I asked this question, again, was in 2020 and 63% of people had said yes. So a lot more of you have been trying sex toys. If you've been using my affiliate links with the discount codes, then thank you very much. If you haven't yet, 
they're in the description. How often do you masturbate? Daily, weekly, monthly, rarely slash never. The majority of people, 49% said weekly, and then 23% said monthly, 16% said rarely slash never and 11% said daily. And the last time I asked this question was again in 2020. And the only real difference that I can see is that more people are masturbating rarely slash never and a hell of a lot less people are masturbating daily. Is this because you all got married. Not that you can't masturbate when you're in a relationship, but it just might mean that you do it less. But we are also planning a whole video about the etiquette and logistics and the stigma around masturbating in relationships. So that's just my theory. <laughs> okay, do you consume porn? And that could be visual, audio, or written. And 64% of you said yes, which is just a smidgen less than last year. And then <laughs> the question I always ask, do you pay for the porn that you consume? And 11% of you have said yes, which is 1% higher than last year. So I'm counting that as a win. It's also 7% higher than when I asked this question in 2020. Yay! <laughs> if you can, please pay for your porn, folks. And then have you had an STI checkup in the last six months? And 15% of you said yes, 85% no. That is just 1% less than last year and a lot less than in 2020. But I also wonder again, is this because like more of you are married or more of you are in longer term relationships so you're getting STI tests less often? Because I haven't had one in the last six months. I think the last one I had was when I had my first appointment when I was pregnant because I do a bunch of tests. Now we are on to your questions that you wanted to ask each other, that you wanted to know and get all nosy and curious about each other's sex lives. There was a lot of different questions and themes that you were curious about and I have split it up into two. So this first theme I've called sexual history and sex life. So what age was your sexual debut? So this is losing your virginity, which I hate that term, but whatever your first sexual experience was and however you want to define that, because I know for people who are survivors of sexual trauma, that can be a very murky thing to try and define, but yeah, this was just like however you wanted to answer this. The majority of people, it was 16 to 19 years old, 56%, and then the next highest was the 20 to 24 year olds at 21%, and 17% of you under 16, and 6% 25 plus because I didn't want to make any assumptions about age or when, if it'll happen. If you've had a sexual partner, how many sexual partners have you had? You guys are a real nosy. This is the one time you can like <laughs> ask your peers that question. No, if you are open with your friends, you can totally ask that question. But of course, doesn't necessarily mean anything. And I'm now realizing, looking at this, that I put the options as one to five and then five to 10. So any folks out there who've had five sexual partners, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's like, which one do I choose? But the vast majority of people, 64% have had one to five partners, 19% have had five to 10, 11% 10 to 20. Oh no, and if you had 10 partners, I'm so sorry. And if you had exactly 20 partners, I'm also so sorry. What did I say? Super rigorous and scientific uh, survey. And then 6% of you have had 20 plus Plus sexual partners. When was the last time you had sex? And that is however you want to define sex. 18% of you, when answering the survey, had had sex in the last 24 hours. Congratulations to you all. 40% of you had done the deed <laughs> in the last week, 23% in the last month, and then 20% in the last year plus. So, you know, we've only got four options here, guys. Interesting. A lot of you are having, like, recent sex. <laughs> How often do you want slash initiate sex? And now I realize that those are like two separate questions entirely because you might want sex, but then not initiate it. But let's see what you guys answered and if we can extrapolate any meaning from it, probably not. So 58% of you said weekly, 19% monthly, 12% rarely slash never, fair enough. And 10% of you daily, daily want it, initiate it. Love the commitment. <laughs> And then how often do you have sex? So this will be interesting to compare because only 3% of you are having sex daily. Wait, but how many of you were masturbating daily? 11% of you. Well, now it's all adding up. 49% <laughs> of you are having sex weekly, 28% monthly and 20% rarely slash never. So in theory, we are all having sex less often than we want to and the that we initiate and I think that's fine. I think that's quite normal because in order to have sex, your wants and needs have to line up with somebody else's at the exact time and the exact moment. That's not always gonna happen. Oh, here we go. 
Turns out I asked that question. <laughs> Are you having as much sex as you would like? And 59% of you said no. And 41% said yes. But that could be a case of like, not just people in a relationship, but if you're single and you would like to be having sex and you're not having sex. So there's a lot of options in terms of like the dynamics of what this question could mean. If you have a sexual partner, do you schedule sex with a partner? And 22% of you said yes. I have a whole video about scheduling sex. You should watch it, it's very good. And I would highly recommend a bit of sex scheduling, especially if you're in a long-term relationship, it can work wonders. But also maybe I should have made use of Instagram's four pole option here and done the like, rarely, sometimes, never, all of the time kind of thing. But that's still a good amount of you doing your sex scheduling. Ooh, we have a 0% on this next question. Okay, how important is sex in your relationship? And 0% of you said the most important thing. But I'm now just looking at a photo. I need to go back into Instagram and actually see if anyone actually answered that. So 95 votes. So the most important thing did actually get some votes. It's not zero people, just under like 1% clearly, but 95 votes, so interesting. For 50% of people, it is somewhat important. And then for 37%, it's very important. And for 12% of you, not very important. I think this also could be in flux and like change over time in a relationship. Because I would say for me right now, sex is somewhat important or not very important right now. But then there've been other times in a relationship where it has been very important. I'm excited for this next question. How did you meet your current partner? So this was something that one of you guys was interested in hearing about. And I am very excited to be asking this question because I get asked this question a lot in terms of advice, like how do I meet someone? And so we can gather some data and figure out how other people are meeting people to then help other people meet people if that's what they want to do. 40% of you work slash school. So basically situations where you're like forced together with strangers and then you become friends and lovers or whatever. 27% dating apps, go dating apps, 18% through friends and 15% other. And so this is where I was curious about the other. So I did a question box so we can kind of read through some of these and hopefully inspire some new meet cutes. Sixth form, friends first and then got together a few months later, five years strong, love it. We were cast as love interests in our high school's musical at university as we were both looking for the library induction sign-up sheet. Hello nerds, love it. Hinge in the YouTube comments section. Guys, hello. <laughs> Go meet your future partner in the comments now. No, no pressure. His mum was my mum's yoga teacher for 20 years. We then met at a party, always through mutual friends. Bumble, uni, one of my friend's housemates. We secretly hooked up for six months. Internet through the same hobby. We got paired up at a Burns night Kaylee and kept chatting afterwards. That's cute. Volunteering, school and parties. He was in the same friend group as my ex. Love it. Night out at the local. Hinge. Tinder in lockdown. Through Instagram. We were flatmates. It was very New Girl vibes. I love that show, New Girl. At nightclub. Lots of Tinder. I'm seeing lots of Tinder and dating apps. Friends of a friend's partner. Through a group of friends I played Dungeons and Dragons with. Blind date. An open mic night. At a Disney 40th birthday party when we were 16 years old at a kickboxing class, at a gig, in a club, playing an online game. We've also got current partner was my employee and also someone's manager <laughs> through our singing teacher. We've also got OkCupid and Match.com in here. Love it. At a wedding, how romantic. I hope this is giving you guys some ideas. Speed dating, <gasps> through church, on holiday, at a pub, at a science fair at a bar, Bumble, played lacrosse together at uni, at a birthday party, mutual friends set us up, working at the National Science Museum in Canberra, Australia. Basically, you can meet someone anywhere. <laughs> Whenever I do get asked this question, my main advice is always just like, go out and live your life. And then you will meet people who are also just like living their lives and enjoying their lives and possibly into and doing similar things to you. Okay, so now we're on to the second theme that came up loads in the questions that you were curious to ask each other, and that is around masturbation and porn. Have you ever felt shame about masturbating? 
and 63% of you had said yes and 37% said no. And then kind of like as a follow-up question, this was my input, I wanted to ask, have you ever felt shame about not masturbating? And 24% of you said yes and 76% said no. So definitely still a lot more shame about masturbating itself, but it's interesting to see that that shame can still go both ways. If you have a partner or you can answer about a past partner, do you know how much your partner masturbates? And 41% of you said yes, and 59% of you said no. This is just interesting to me, especially because we're currently working on a video about masturbation in relationships, the kind of like stigma and logistics and that whole thing. So this is really interesting. I don't know what to make of it, but there we have it. We've got some data. I think I did a typo in this question. What can I say? It's late, there are typos. Can you tell that I'm a new mum? But it says, do you want porn that is reflective of your sexuality? I think I might have meant watch, but want kind of like feels like it's given a similar vibe. And 69, nice, percent of you said yes. And 31% of you said no. Is that because you don't like want any porn in general or it doesn't necessarily have to reflect your sexuality for it to be appealing to you? I mean, we did a whole video on genital non-concordance that kind of goes into that a little bit about enjoying porn that might not be reflective of your sexual orientation. And yes, nice, 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 nice. How often do you use sex toys during solo sex? The biggest percentage is actually the rarely slash never folks at 33%, and then sometimes 24%, and most of the time at 23%, and always at 21%. It's actually fairly evenly split across the board, but most of you, not using sex toys. Fair enough, whatever floats your boat. What is your go-to kind of porn? So video, audio, written word or photo? And written word, I'm honestly not surprised that video is up there with the 61%, but I love that written word has got like a good chunk there at 28% and then 8% audio and 3% photo. Oh, those old school like porno mags are just gonna be like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Follow-up question for the comments if you want to share. Where is your favourite place to find written porn? Is it through apps? Is it through books? Is it through like literotica.com or like other websites? I don't even know if it's a .com, but literotica. Do you fantasise slash use your imagination during solo sex? And 79% of you said yes and 21% said no. Fantasy and imagination. Love it, love it. If you're not doing that, are you watching porn instead? Or are you just zoning out? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, do you need zero stimulus, imagine. Our final question, have you ever tried something you've seen in porn in real life? And 48% of you had said yes, and 52% said no. Very evenly split there, but obviously this could be so broad in terms of like trying a new position to like trying something so extreme to also just like trying like the Spider-Man upside down kiss. Like who's tried that? I mean, I saw it in a movie and it's like, let's try the Spider-Man kiss. You know, you know what I'm saying? And there we have it. Those are the results of the Hannah Witten sex survey 2023. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for answering it if you took part. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram so you can take part in other fun surveys and potentially the Hannah Witten Sex Survey 2024, if and when that comes out on time, hopefully, we'll see. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of the different themes we explored, maybe get into a bit more of the answers and the questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.